Hey, what's up everybody? This is Eric at Lofton Art, and uh, I've got a plate of figs, and it's uh, October 11th, and uh, you know, I, I come home and we're still getting nice weather here in Oregon. Um, it was 70 something and sunny today. Um, the, the season is, is certainly winding down, um, but we have a lot of figs kind of coming on right now. Um, hopefully in a, in a normal year, some of this stuff would be a little bit earlier, but, um, there's, there's a few that I wanted to talk about. Um, some of them I haven't reviewed <clears throat> yet. Some of them I have, um, there's there's one on the plate that is a California find that I I either have a mislabeled tree, which I don't believe to be the case, or the um, the tree that was originally found either wasn't a seedling or it you know uh, its lineage comes from something known and maybe it passed on some very specific known traits. Um, the person that I got it from got it directly from the finder. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't wanna, don't wanna like poo poo anybody, but <clears throat> there's, there's something, something interesting happening there. <clears throat> so let's, let's start with the the known quantities, okay? These down here. Now this one is from my in-ground um, Bronx Italian Purple Unknown, okay? Uh, it's it's an Aetna type, um, at least I think. Um, these don't get, these are from the interior of the tree, so they're not getting as much sun, so they're not as dark. Um, but you know, I mean, it's it's a nice Etna type. Um, they're very berry flavored, nice flavor. Uh, it does well. It's in the ground. Very reliable. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, and it's a nice fig. Okay. Most of your Etna types are going to work well for you, whether they're in a pot or in the ground in the Willamette Valley. Um, they will do better if they're up against a, a south-facing wall, like all figs will, but uh, they're pretty reliable. Mine's out in the middle of my yard, more or less, um, and, it, and it does pretty well. Now, this one is from a younger tree that I put in the ground last year from a different kind of Etna. Uh, it was an unlabeled one, but um, the, the outside, I don't know how well you can see it, but the outside is much darker. And that's a product of being in more direct sunlight. It's in a more choice spot. Um, and, uh, you know, the interior, relatively the same. Uh, maybe a little bit more ripe than those other ones. But flavor-wise, very, very similar. This one's a little bit more sweet because it's more ripe than that one. So... <clears throat> An Etna, no matter what it is, should do really, really well. Now, I've got a few that don't perform as well as some others. They're maybe a, a week or two later in producing, but that could be year to year variation. It could be tree to tree variation. Um, I have, you know, Red Lebanese Bacaw Valley, which seems to be a, a slightly different uh, skin texture for me. It's a little bit more fuzzy than some other ones. Some other ones are a little bit bigger. Some others are a little smaller, a little bit more round. There's, there's slight variances, but you're splitting hairs. Okay. All right. So the point of that is if you're in the Willamette Valley, get in that in the type, even if it's just Chicago Hardy, it's going to, it's going to perform well. Okay. All right. Now this one, this one is from my Isbot on Naj fig um and uh i i talked about this one last year on the forum it does very very well no head start no greenhouse um very reliable 
relatively prolific. Um, I'm not sure you can tell, but there's a substantial amount of syrup in there. Um, really, really good honey fig. There's a little bit of tanginess to it that's uh, really, um, I think, really flavorful. Right, some people talk about like pineapple flavor. Um, the more ripe they get, I don't necessarily get as much of the pineapple. If they're a little bit underripe, you definitely get some of that. But as it stands now, um, I don't get any pineapple in it. It's just a really good, sweet honey fig. Now, the cool thing about this one is the ripening time from when it starts to swell to when it's to this stage is only three or four days. Um, even in our relatively cool evenings, um, this time of year, middle, middle of October, it's a potted tree, but it ripens relatively quickly. So that's, that's a real benefit for a honey fig um, that's been pretty rare. Um, what are you doing? Get down. <laughs> Hi, babies. <laughs> Can't have any of those. All right. So, um, uh, next one, this one here, this is from an in-ground Detrasis Blades. Uh, I've talked about this tree a lot. This is an awesome fig. One of my favorites. Um, has a very pronounced, like, Hawaiian punch flavor and definitely a lot of citrus notes to it. Um, one of the absolute best figs we can grow in the ground. Uh, it also puts out Breba, and it ripens its main crop in plenty of time in Oregon. So, really, really, really high quality. Now this one is new to me this year. Um, this one's called Bordesote Rosa. Um, that's another Pons variety. Uh, it did get the greenhouse, but um, this will be the first fig off of that tree for me this year. I'm excited to see what this one's like. Um, really sweet. It's, it's so much different than that because this has so much citrus in it versus this is just straight up sugary berry fig flavor. That's really fascinating. Um, it doesn't, right now it doesn't taste significantly like Bergesote grease. Um, it tastes um, a lot more sweet. So even ripening in the cold, it's, it's really well ripened and very sweet. So that's, that's cool. So um, I don't know what it'll do without a greenhouse. You know, that's, that's next up on the docket for next year. So this is the last one. Now, believe it or not, these are off of two different trees. Um, seeing them in person, I don't necessarily think that you'd be able to tell the trees apart. Um, they seem really, really similar. This is my fake long dute that's, you know, a Brunswick type or maybe a black Spanish type. Uh, and this one's called Cherry Bourbon. Now, I don't know how many people grow Brunswick's or Dan's Favorite or Black Spanish. Um, that's a dead ringer for one of those. So we'll give it a shot, see what it tastes like. It's definitely nice and sweet, but there's no cherry or bourbon flavor to it. Um, so I don't know what to think about that one. Um, it is a nice sweet honey fig, but it tastes almost identical to Angier Torquay, which is, again, a Brunswick type. Um, so who knows what it's like with pollination, um, but there you go. It's not bad, but if you have Brunswick or Angier Turkey or Dan's Favorite or Magnolia or <laughs> any one of those other kinds of figs, I don't think you need that one. 
it's it's you know like i said on the angier torquey video the other day brunswick's are like a dime a dozen so they're not bad um being commonplace does not make them bad it just means that they're not like a rare fig that you need to go out and beat somebody's door down for okay all right hope that helps everybody and uh take care see you on the next one